Today, I want to show you how you can use concepts from game theory like backwards induction and Nash equilibrium to help you to get a raise from your boss. In particular, game theory tells us that the best chance of you getting a raise is to convince your boss. So convince is not the same thing as simply telling your boss that you will quit if you do not get the money. To better understand these insights, let's start off by making some assumptions here. And when we think about negotiating a raise, there are usually at least two parties involved, right? So let's say in this situation, there's just you and your boss. And let's assume here that your boss likes you and he thinks that you're valuable. That's why you're thinking of asking for a raise in the first place. And let's assume here that you would rather stay than to quit because staying without a raise is better than being jobless. Now that we've made our assumptions, we want to choose the appropriate model that would best model our situation. And in this case, we're going to use this idea of the sequential move game. A sequential move game is when one player chooses his actions before others can choose theirs. So it seems to best model the dynamics in a salary negotiation because there is you here and you could, for example, choose to ask for a raise or not ask for a raise. And in turn, your boss seems to be able to uh, choose different actions as well. Right? These are branches that we can draw out. These are possible options you could take. You could either choose to accept your request or you could reject. Let's say that if you never ask for a raise, he would always never give you a raise. And then the game ends in this state of the world. But it doesn't end here. Because when you ask for a raise uh, and your boss accepts or reject, you in turn could also take some actions. Can you think of what actions you could do? I'm going to suggest here that you could either do two things. You could either stay or quit. So we can see here that all these brackets represent different states of the world. And then we now need to fill in the payoffs at each different states of the world. We've just seen how we can use a sequential move game to model a job salary negotiating situation with the red color representing your payoffs and the purple representing your boss's payoffs. Now, the payoffs are in utility terms. And how do we fill in these numbers? We base that upon the assumptions that we made earlier. So for example, we assume that your boss likes you and he would rather you to stay than to quit. So if you quit, you can see here that we need to put a number smaller than a number we choose here. So these the numbers you choose are essentially arbitrary, but they are meaningful in relation to each other. So you know we want to put a number here to express that your boss is quite happy if you stay and less happy if you quit. And I'm chosen here a 10 here because if you do not ask for a raise and your boss doesn't give you a raise, he is best off here because he doesn't need to uh, incur more cost to keep you here. So that's why this is a 9 and this is a 10. So now that we've seen this, we need to think about what are your payoffs. So if you remember, we said that you would rather prefer staying without a raise than quitting. And we need to also reflect this. So when you ask for a raise and you get rejected and you stay on, this should be higher than this number here. But of course, this number is going to be lesser than this number here because you're so much better off with a raise. But it's also going to be lesser than 5 because you did not ask for a raise and so there is no cost to negotiating. It's costly to negotiate and it only pays off if you get the 10. So these numbers are meaningful in relation to each other. Now, I'm going to show you how you can use the idea of backwards induction to find the Nash equilibrium or the steady state to help you make predictions based on the assumptions that we've just made. It's misleading to think of backwards induction as simply just looking at the numbers right here and somehow magically we would figure out what is going to happen in the game. This is not true. We always need to start from the very beginning, but with the idea that each player cares about the consequences of their choices and they must think ahead. So you, for example, could choose to get a raise or not ask for a raise. And you know that you get a utility of five here when you stay silent but you need to figure out what's going to happen here when you ask for a raise. Now to know that, you need to put yourself in your boss's shoes to figure out what he will do so you will know what utility you'll get based on your boss's actions. And to know what your boss would do, you would need to know that he is also leveling the same way. 
he is also putting himself in your shoes to figure out what you will do so that he will maximize his utility as well. And if he accepts, he knows by putting himself in your shoes that you will stay. Why? Because 10 is higher than negative 2. And so he gets a payoff of 9 here. Now, what happens when he choose to reject? What is the utility of rejecting to your boss? Well, he knows that you will stay rather than quit because 4 is also higher than negative 2. So that's why when you simply just tell your boss that you will quit, this will not work because he knows that you will stay over quitting because he knows how painful it is quitting is for you. And in this state of the world, he gets 10. You know that your boss will always choose to reject your request. Now knowing this, we reason all the way back again to figure out which maximizes your utility. And here you can clearly see that 5 is going to be higher than 4. And so you will never ever ever choose to ask for a raise in the first place. You will stay silent and in turn, given, and this is the key idea of a Nash equilibrium, given your strategic choice, your boss would just simply reject as well. And this is what becomes a Nash equilibrium here. Because you can see here that given the strategy of your boss, right, given that he will always choose to reject when you ask for a raise, you would rather not ask for a raise. And given the fact that you will not ask for a raise, your boss will always choose to stay silent. Next, I want to show you how you can take specific steps to really give you the Nash equilibrium that you truly want, which is this outcome over here. And central to that is having a genuinely credible exit threat. And what I mean by this is not just simply telling your boss that you would quit if he don't give you the raise because he's not going to believe you given the assumptions that we've made in scenario one. But by showing that quitting is better than staying without a raise, you can prove to your boss that when he rejects you, you will then be unable to stay on, which would then lead him to having an inferior uh, benefit here. So how do you, for example, make quitting better than staying without a raise? One thing you could do is to convince your boss that you have other offers outside. So this means proving to your boss that you have other alternative offers or companies that are willing to give you the raise you deserve. Notice that when you have other options, quitting now no longer becomes so painful, right? Let's say quitting now gives you a 7 because you have another job that is willing to take you in. And now because 7 is greater than 4, he, your boss knows now that when you ask for a raise and he rejects you, you will now choose quit instead of staying because 7 is greater than 4. And so when you choose to quit, your boss now, because he values you, would get 6. Now, if he accepts you, again, because you would choose staying, because 10 is greater than 7, he gets 9 here. And this changes the Nash equilibrium because when now you ask for a raise, you know that your boss would choose to accept and that you would get a 10. And so you always choose to ask for your raise. And your boss, because now he's convinced, because you have a credible exit threat, he would now be accepting your request to keep you in the company. And so this becomes the new Nash equilibrium here. Another way of getting a raise from your boss, even if you don't have any other offers, so even if uh, quitting is still very painful for you because you don't have another job offer and this is still uh, negative too, is to tell everybody in the firm that you would definitely quit if you do not get the raise. So we're trying here to attack uh, the payoffs of staying. We're trying to show to our boss that we really mean business here and that, you know what, because you've said this to everybody, it makes it impossible to stay on when you don't get your raise. It's utterly humiliating. And again, you get to achieve this Nash equilibrium here. And so the central idea I want to share with you here is that having a credible exit threat is very important. And sometimes getting rid of choices or at least being committed to a particular choice or option can actually help you to increase your bargaining power when it comes to salary negotiation. And the final thing I want to leave here in this video is that assumptions matter a lot in game theory. So for example, we've talked about the assumption here that your boss likes you. What happens if your boss hates you or he's indifferent or he gets better off when you actually leave the firm? So consider drawing a tree out that is similar to this with those assumptions in mind. 
So thank you for watching this video and leave some comments below.